Uh, okay, all right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for the time today. Uh, my name is Tavis. I'm one of the co-founders of Kadoa. Uh, at Kadoa, we're automating data extraction with AI. So data is still the new oil. Like this is an old term, but um, it's it's the new oil more than ever. Um, you're all working in LLMs. You, you get the point. Um, enterprises are spending a lot of money uh, on manual processes to extract uh, data from unstructured data sources. This is where a lot of valuable data actually lives. About 80% of valuable data is uh, in unstructured formats. Uh, this includes HTML, uh, PDFs, CSVs, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, but this, this data is really important. And so, so companies are spending a lot of money and a lot of effort uh, to extract this data. Um, but of course, they would, they would love an easier way. Um, so at Kadoa, what we're doing is we're using AI to uh, to automate all of this um, laborious and, uh, and time-consuming work. Um, so this is a combination of, of training uh, advanced L1 tasks uh, using autonomous agents for orchestration and uh, plug-and-play data workflows. Um, our current focus right now is extracting data from websites. Um, so this includes exploring websites, uh, finding the data, where it's located, um, building scrapers or extracting data from unstructured data sources, um, and then transforming that data into data that, that's usable. Uh, so that includes classifying it, uh, mapping it, and normalizing it, and then making it available through APIs, webhooks, uh, and more. Um, so this is maybe a bit of an eyesore, but just to give you kind of like an idea of what Kado looks like. Um, lately, we've been, we've been focusing on uh, scraping uh, company career pages and, and job boards. Um, so you can kind of see on the left, like this is like a list of different uh, career pages. Um, and essentially all the user needs to do is provide this URL um, and then our technology does the rest. Um, so uh, our technology understands the, the structure of, of the career page, um, understands the structure of the job postings and converts these job postings into structured data. So data extraction is, is a rapidly expanding space. Um, with, with the advent of LLMs, um, it's, it's growing faster than ever. Um, we've measured it to be around 6 billion, um, but it's quite lar likely much larger. Um, the trends that we're really building our company on, on, on top of uh, include the rapid growth of unstructured data. As I mentioned earlier, about 89% of, of the world's data is unstructured, um, and it's just continuing to grow. So 90% of it has pr been produced in just over the last two years. Um, LMs are also enabling new automation. Um, so what, the reasons why we're able to do this is, is because of LMs. Uh, previously, there are older versions of, of machine learning um, or just, just human processes that, that would do this. Um, but because LMs are allowing uh, automation to advance so quickly, um, this, is what we're, this is why we're able to do it. Um, and of course, everybody wants to automate things. Um, nobody wants to do any repetitive tasks. So there's a consistent demand of uh, automation. Um, so some of the different use cases for Kajoa. Um, so you, you think about data extraction, and that's a pretty like nebulous topic. Um, but uh, we've identified a number of use cases that uh, that we're going after. Obviously, generated by that's a huge one. Um, turning websites into APIs. Um, at HR Tech, this is this is what we're primarily focused on, as I showed you with job posting data. Um, so we're currently working with um, uh, company, uh, sorry, uh, um, uh, job boards, uh, HR tech companies that require. Um, structured data from, from across the internet of, of job posting feeds. Um, E-commerce is also a very huge use case uh, for data extraction, especially on the internet. Um, there's so much e-commerce online. There, there's, so, there's so many products and prices and information. Um, and that's, that's valuable to, to many different companies. Obviously, for retailers who want to monitor prices of their competitors, um, but also investors who want to, want to monitor market trends um, and, uh, and many more. And then also sales teams. Um, there are a lot of big companies that are built off of uh, scraped data, such as Zoom Info, um, where basically their, their foundation is, is, is a ag mass aggregation of company information. Um, so this data is hugely valuable to, uh, to, uh, to lead generation of sales teams. Um, so one of our largest clients right now is, uh, is a job board. Um, and so they originally had two FTEs that were doing web scraping. Um, and it was about a seven day process and it was a very clunky um, uh, procedure and um, required a, a lot of maintenance. Um, and we replaced their operations with something way better. 
um, our solution uh, was able to, to, to extract the jobs that they're looking for um, in only a few minutes instead of a few days. Um, and, it's, and it's fully managed. Um, so there's nobody that needs to manage these teams as well. Um, and this has been, uh, this is also quite a, quite a large deal size. I'm not gonna get into like our revenue or, or um, specific uh, numbers, but, um, but uh, our deal sizes typically go around between like one to, to 10K at, at the moment uh, per month. Um, so that, that equates to about like uh, about a, um, a, a six figure uh, annual recurring deals. Um, and those are kind of the deals that we're going for right now. Um, as we build up our infrastructure, we're going to go after larger deals. Um, but our sweet spot right now is is, is around that range. Um, and just to close things off, um, this is the team. So um, so I'm there in the middle, my name's Tavis, and then my two co-founders are, are Adrian and Johnny. Um, so both of them have uh, have deep engineer experience um, and a high marketing background. Um, so that's it at a high level. Um, I skipped a bunch of stuff because uh, I, I want to keep that private, but uh, happy to answer any questions that I have. Maureen, it is all yours. Awesome. Thank you so much. This uh, this this was great. Very informative. Um, I, I think, I mean, oh, to be honest, overall, I really liked the deck. It was very relatively easy to understand. Um, but uh, even at a short time, I probably just skimmed through it once before. Um, I now have a better understanding of what you do. Do you want to go through the slides one way one? I think that might be. Yeah, let's um, go for it. Do you want to start with this one or go to the next one? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I definitely like the fact that you start by like just having a tagline, introducing yourself. I think that that gives um, some insight into what I have to expect to hear from you. So I think that's that's very useful. So I, I don't have any specific comment on that. Um, I'm not a designer, but you, you're, you're, the color is really in, into my eye. But that's that's your choice. Um, fair enough. Fair enough. Go ahead. O overall, I think what I realize is that and this might be because this is a short deck, but you definitely have a lot more text than I expect to see. Um, that is not necessarily a bad thing. I would say there are two different types of decks that you would send to any investor. One is a type of deck that the investor can go through with on their own, which is more informative, have, have a lot of text, and they can actually read it before having a conversation with you. But if you want me to focus on what you're telling me, I obviously can't really focus on what you're telling me and also read the text. Um, so I would say this is definitely on, on the side of having more text. Um, again, there's there's nothing too negative about having a lot of text. Some people like it, some people don't like it. Some people can actually manage their brain in a way that they don't focus on the text and just listen to the founder and look at the images and things that are more interactive. Um, but I, I would say it would be nicer if you can condense it the text a bit more. Um, I like the image on the right side a lot. I was, I mean, I initially I, I thought of it as a as a pyramid and like things that are at the top of the pyramid uh, that are. But then I thought it would be cooler if it looked like an iceberg, where that you have actually a yeah. huge amount outside the water and then um, uh, it, it, a tiny amount outside the water, but then a huge amount actually missed underneath. Uh, which is which is basically the market that you're you're targeting, but I, I think this this also um, delivers the message. Um, how much work do you do to set up an onboard client? Oh, okay, we'll we'll get to questions. Um, um, the um, so in terms of me understanding problem, I think one of the things that I did not understand is that how would this be different from other scrapers? Is is there any unique about it? There, um, they're like open source solutions for data scraping. There are other startups that provide APIs which you can use and scrape data in a website or I don't know, whatever document that you have. Um, I guess what I didn't understand, yes, Amir says, uh, most is my question. What I didn't understand was that what is the secret sauce or what is the problem even though those other solutions still exist? Makes sense, makes sense. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely not an expert in data scraping and uh, and and cleaning and um, structuring data, et cetera. But I have we have let's say for example one investment done on a company that does data scraping from municipalities um, um, across North America. They they then um, structure that data and and do the rest, and they have designed their their own crawlers and spiders and whatever. Um, but that was the first question in, in my mind. Um, 
but I think, I think, yeah, overall 90% there, very clear, very, very cleanly uh, made. You can, you can move to the next slide. Cool. Um, I think well, I, so I didn't look at the website and I listened to you. What you explained was very clear to me that uh, the process of how you actually work with the data and what is the, the solution that you provide. Um, again, I think the image that you have is is very informative and nice. You have this oil well. It's it basically initially has access to the top of the I guess funnel, but then there's like this huge massive reservoir at the bottom that is that is missing. I think that um, that graphic is 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 very nice and self-explanatory. Um, I think here is probably where you can probably highlight that moat a bit more. Um, that what is it that is different? what is it that the llm does that previously wasn't uh, possible with the let's say all the other apis and solutions that are out there and what is it that that you do that is that is different i think that that's probably the missing piece between the solution and the problem cool cool um yeah i don't have any other notes i mean if you want to add anything yeah, Moeen, I just wanted to give a logistics point. Uh, we'll get to the chat question. Oh, shit. Again, yeah. So don't worry about this. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, let's let's move on. Okay, this, yeah, this is uh, probably the weakest slide you have. It's, I can't, I just can't see what it is. Like, I, I don't understand it. Like, you explained to me that these are different job boards or job postings and the data, the data can be extracted, but, but I can definitely tell you that it didn't, add a lot of the like it, it was not very valuable like i couldn't understand it i couldn't read it um i'm on my laptop so i definitely can't read what is on there you might be able to if you have a larger screen uh, but i definitely can't understand what is what is on here yeah that's fair like in my defense um we normally do a demo um but we didn't have enough time so i just threw together some screenshots but, but yeah i agree yeah um I mean, you can you can definitely add a bit of the, a bit of graphics into the workflow. Like here is how you do the work. Step one, you integrate the API. Step two, you use whatever prompt you have. Step three, um, our solution goes and extracts X and Y. And step four, this is the report that you have in terms of what is it that we found, um, and this is how you get value from it. That could be also, I guess, a way of demonstrating the solution, but um but i think yeah that you you obviously would have a chance in, a, in an actual pitch to do a demo or you can take this to an app appendix a slide you can ex expand it a bit make it larger so that it's it's more legible yeah yeah that makes sense that makes sense um cool we can go to the next one um okay cool this is um this is interesting um i think um what uh, would be interesting is for me to better understand how you like how you got to the TAM SAM and SOM if you can if you can maybe explain that part when you're going through the deck you obviously obviously I see the billion dollar and I'm like okay check this is a billion dollar market it's massive but then if I want to go a bit deeper I'm like okay how is this a um uh, how, how is this number um uh, calculated what is the background who are you assuming as your customers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, to your defense, you would have more time on talking about this this uh, slide when you're pitching to someone. You, you are going to pitch the whole thing in five, six minutes. So maybe that's the reason. But it would be, I would just add that it would be very useful if you tell me how you came about, uh, uh, how the number came about. Um, I don't need the, um, um, I guess, a lot of uh, the underlying text. I, I can't I can't read them to be honest while you're explaining the stuff. Um, they're also smaller in size. But if you can explain to me how you got to the number, that would be great. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I like um, the I like the trends a lot. I think that adds um, a lot more color to where we're going. I think it's still um, on the text heavy side. You can definitely condense whatever text you have into okay, forty five percent of activities are going to be automated or and. And I guess the other thing is that if you can if you can condense stuff and show me one single number, like eighty to ninety percent of the data is unstructured, that is that is a massive uh, amount of unstructured data which could use your your solution. So I think 
you could highlight just the number and me looking at this, the deck could understand, it. okay, it is a massive market. The trend is also showing that we have to do something about this, uh, the problem that exists. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. One thing just for, for people on the call to, to know is that we do like link to like a deeper market research, like right over here. Um, but I just didn't include that in the deck. Um, but I don't, I don't know if that's standard or not. Like, um, yeah, the tricky thing, like with this market is it's, it's kind of hard to do like a bottom up, uh, market analysis because of like all the diverse use cases. Um, so we do like reference like a bunch of like industry reports, um, on like a notion doc, um, elsewhere. Okay, I'll, I'll, it would be still nice if you can do bottom-up analysis. What's okay. your assumptions? And and obviously there's gonna be a lot of assumptions that you're gonna make, but as long as they're logical. Right, right, okay. All right, that's good feedback. Cool, and um, we can go to the use case. Um, I think this, this was definitely very, very informative. I got to better understand um, what are the different use cases? Uh, and I mean, one of the other things that you can add here is that, okay, websites to API, this is your expectation of the market size. HR tech, this is your expectation of market. Like you, you can add a bit of impact to each of the verticals that you can enter as well. That's, that's number one. The other thing is that some investors are anal about the fact that you have to focus on the customer segment that you're going after, So which you might agree or not. Uh, but you can also say you've, you're targeting these two verticals initially because we have a set of ex skill sets or because the first customers that reached out to us are in this market and we have uh, enough um, cases to these to show. So I think showing which verticals you're going to operate in is very valuable. Plus, if you can show um, what is the market size, what is the potential for you, and then while you're going after a specific one, that's on the left side obviously this slide is cramped because you want to explain everything very quickly i think the case study is worth having its own separate slide um, um I, you can you can definitely add more color to the case study as well like what would be what was the roi for the customer how long have you been working with them um one of the things that we i guess care about to see is the churn and that churn basically tells me whether they liked working with you or not so roi uh, plus the churn number if uh, any, I mean, for one specific case study, you're not going to give me a churn number, but it can tell me they've been using the platform for the past 12 months and they love it or, or they expanded their use case, et cetera. Um, that would be, that would be very valuable. Thanks. Nice, nice. Um, and then the last one, um, there, again, there are two different types of, I guess, classes of, um, thoughts. One is, one is that you, you have the team slide at the beginning. The other is that you have to keep this uh, team slide at the end. That doesn't matter, to be honest. Um, but I think it would be it would make it um, smoother for me if I could also see a bit more into what you have done without clicking on LinkedIn. There is, however, there is a danger there. You might add too much. Like you might like if you if you want to add where you went to school, what you have worked on before, et cetera, et cetera. That might also make this slide too crowded. Um, so if you can add a tiny bit more without adding too much text, that would be that would be lovely. I mean, you have added 13 years of marketing. That's great. Um, but if you can add maybe one more liner on what what you have done before, that would guarantee success here. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Some people love the logos. Um, I don't think they mean much, but <laughs> anyways. Um, I I would just add that obviously this was. This was for a demo case, but the things that obviously we haven't seen, and I know that Tavis has on, on his deck are stuff around their business model, the revenue model, how he's actually gonna charge the customers or, or what is the projection on the revenue side. Um, obviously you might not be um, willing to show who are the competitors right now, but it would be interesting to see who the competitors are. What is it that they're doing? What is the differentiator? Um, and, uh, and I think we touched a, a tiny bit on the traction so far, obviously like knowing the traction would be, would be, uh, interesting. Um, and then ultimately usually what I do or what I, what I ask people to do is to kind of tell me what is, what is the ask? What is it that you want? You pitched me for 
15 minutes. What is it that you want? You want X amount of money. You want introduction to so on. So what is it that you want? And if let's say part of it is, is the investment, what is the use of fund? I think having the use of fund that ties back into your financial projection, that ties back into your um, current traction would uh, add a, a lot of credibility to you having, having a concrete plan moving forward. Uh, cool. Um, I I want to be conscious of the time because I want to play that devil's advocate a little because Moeen was very nice, um, but I also want to hear from Matt uh, in the chat. He was saying, if you don't mind unmuting yourself and opening your camera, uh, you said you have a lot of experience in this space and this looks outstanding. Coat on yeah. Coat. It, it it does, Tavis. A really great pitch. I thought that was fantastic. Um, you did a great job, and, and just really, uh, I'm going to be short. Um, I, I have a lot of experience in this domain in terms of uh, web scraping, uh, browser automation. Uh, we even have an active project right now on Upwork to build some foundational pieces for those things. And I've hit all the challenges that your product seems to solve, like the, you know, trying to go to Indeed.com with any sort of, you know, scraping tool and getting immediately blocked by Cloudflare. Uh, and then all the manual work that you have to do to select that data and pull it off the web page. Um, I think the the one thing that I wanted to add, this is the, you know, Amir's, you know, said if you could make a comment about what I think your unique value proposition is. I, I think the thing that I really love about your product is that it potentially opens the door for a non-technical user to scrape data and integrate it into their workflow. So like what that would mean like really practically is imagine I'm an HR person and the before is that if I wanted to like pull data off a job board, which I think is your top example on your page, and and do like an analysis of like maybe where our job is ranking on those, or how many open positions there are, or what are the salaries of those other positions that we're like posting for, I, I would either have to do that work manually, which I wouldn't, or if I wanted to do that in an automated way, I'd have to go to a, de a developer team, and they're going to hit all the barriers that would take them weeks to develop that, uh, and it almost certainly wouldn't get prioritized, and that detracts from business value. And, and if I could go as an HR person to your website, pump in the URL, get structured data back in the form of a table, download it into an Excel sheet, in, like a tool I'm familiar with, and immediately get an answer, I could do that in like two hours. And to me, that is like the great promise here of what you have is that you could potentially move web scraping and the analysis of data to make better business decisions and put that into non-technical users' hands. So. Uh, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there that I think uh, that's really the thing that excites me about your pitch. Again, fabulous, fabulous job. Awesome, thank you. And what's also really cool, I'll just add, is that our job posting use case of that job board, um, it is a non-technical user that, that's using it. So they're like finding the job boards and throwing in there and there you go. <laughs>